Okay, so today we're going to be unboxing and having a quick look at the ASUS P7P55DE Deluxe. I mean, motherboard names. It's like, yes, these all mean something, but man, are they ever like confusing when you're trying to shop and you don't actually know a lot about computers. Okay, so this is part of their new Extreme Design platform, number one performance, reliability, and safety. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means, but anyway, it's Windows 7 ready physics ready, whatever that means. It's LGA 1156, it's P55, so you're gonna see the usual P55 features, except that this is one of their new updated boards, and it includes USB 3.0, SATA 6 gigabit per second, as well as a 24 hybrid phase design, which according to this, means that it has 16 plus three phases and T-probe, which I believe is some kind of like a dynamic adjuster of da -da -da detects and balances power phase loads and temperatures real time with optimal power phase functions, components run cooler and extend system lifespan. Very cool. Okay, so also on this board, let's start at the top. You have, high, you have the ExpressGate Hybrid OS, whatever, you have system level energy efficiency, so that um, controls everything about your system to try and get better power savings or something. You have an onboard switch, um, which is a fairly common feature at this point. You have the Q design for DIY quickly and easily. Okay, you've got quad GPU SLI and quad GPU Crossfire X support. That's pretty cool. Auto tuning, so they've got a software overclocking utility and they have MemoK, -okay, which allows you to take even memory that has sort of non-standardized um, non -standardized settings. It allows you to at least get the board to boot with that memory in so that you can adjust all of the settings and get it to run properly at the rated speed. So let's get this box open and have a look at what we have for accessories. Okay, the first thing I like about this board is that it has black SATA cables. I am so sick of seeing like yellow and red SATA cables. Show me a system with a color scheme that yellow looks good in. I challenge you to do that. Okay, so you've got three right angle and three straight SATA cables. Then you've got an SLI bridge, okay, you've got the Q connectors, part of their Q design, and those allow you to plug in the front panel connectors fairly easily. I love this. This is awesome. I talked about this on one of the recent ASUS boards I had a look at. Instead of including two USB and one Firewire port, I'm now seeing combo backplates that are two USB and an eSATA port. Way more useful. I mean, who uses Firewire anyway? Okay, then we've got, what is this? Do, 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 do. Turbo key, bus speed. Oh, okay, so this is their little overclocking remote control that looks to plug into, uh, must be USB because it's color coded red, white, green, black, black, like USB, but it's a converted USB port on the board somewhere. Okay, then you've got an IDE cable. Then you've got an IO shield, which isn't color coded, but they have done a one special call out. You can see these two USB ports are highlighted white. Those are the USB 3.0 ports. Then we've got the piece of the user guide as well as the driver disc and ASUS case badge. Okay, don't, don't use this driver disc, download the latest ones as I usually say. Now let's get the board itself out of here. Now, I realize that the uh, P55 boards launched not all that long ago, but we're seeing so many updated product designs just because of the launch of SATA 3 and USB 3.0. So those, that's gonna be kind of the focus of my unboxing, but let's do a quick overview of the overall design of this board. Okay, so we have two PCI Express 16X slots, so those are gonna be for your Crossfire or SLI. They are functional in 8X, 8X mode if you are using Crossfire or SLI, like all P55 boards, because the PCI Express lanes are actually powered by the CPU and not by the chipset. Okay, down at the bottom here, we've got our onboard power and reset switches. And, oh, there's a PLX chip for some reason, although I couldn't tell you what that is for. Oh, I wish I knew why that was there, because normally a PLX chip is like a PCI Express bridge chip, and it's usually there to, like, split PCI Express lanes or something. No, no, they both run at 8x. Okay, so I wasn't wrong there. All right, so let's keep moving right along. Then we've got three USB 2.0 headers. Then we have... Okay, so these two white ones here are the SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, okay? This one is SATA underscore E1, and I don't know what the relevance of that is. Maybe it's running off the same chipset as the other eSATA back here. I'm kind of guessing there, and since all of the chips are covered under this kind of neat looking um, heatsink, I can't really tell what they are. Then on the side of the board, we've got six SATA 2 ports. So these are all running off the Intel chipset. We've got an IDE port. You will notice the conspicuous absence of a floppy port. I'm sure most people won't miss that. Like all P55 boards, we've got support for dual channel DDR3 memory. And you can see that they're using their um, 
trademark design here on the memory slots. Only one end of the memory slots actually has a clip. So what you're supposed to do is peel these back, slide the memory slot in from the top into this side, and then just clip it in from the one side. So it makes memory installation in theory much easier. Okay, we've also got our Mem OK button over here. So that is to make sure that the board can post with whatever memory you happen to be using. And then up here we've got little uh, switches to overvolt the CPU, the integrated memory controller, or the RAM. It's kind of nice to have those hardware switches for the really hardcore guys who are using this on an open test bench anyway. Okay, so moving right along, we've got our power connector at its ideal place along the right-hand edge of the board, and then we've got an 8-pin power connector up at the top, sort of left of the board. A lot of, a lot of cases these days have a hole for it right over here, so it's a little bit of a reach, but overall I like this position. Uh, here is our 24-phase hybrid design, which apparently means 16 phases for the CPU itself, and then I believe 3 phases for the integrated memory controller. Something that I really like about this board right off the bat is it has so many 4-pin fan connectors. We've got a couple here, and most boards usually just give you one for the CPU and no other ones, but it's kind of nice to see that. ASUS is using their now trademark, because so many of their recent boards are using it, this kind of like ice castle looking MOSFET cooler design. I really like that. I think it looks really stylish. Um, doo -doo -doo, what am I missing here? Okay, well, here's the, oh, here. Here's the plug for that, um, for that overclocking remote control thing. So I, I can't imagine the practicality of that, but I guess you plug it in here if you're on an open test bench and then you can kind of run it off the top of the board that way. Uh, here's the CPU socket. It's an LGA 1156 socket, sports Core i5, Core i7, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that pretty, oh, I like this, actually. It's so rare you see the board manufacturers not cheap out and uh, use like proper back plates on their MOSFET coolers because this really gives a lot more rigidity to the board. I mean, a PCB has a lot of flex in it, so when you put these kind of uh, mounting plates on the back, it allows you to make much better contact with the MOSFET coolers on the top so you can ensure that everything gets cooled adequately. So I really like to see that as well. Okay, then let's get around to the back of the board. Here we've got two PS2 ports. I don't think these are ever gonna go away, to be honest. We have a clear CMOS switch. Here's our two USB 3.0 ports. Then we have two digital audio ports. We've got six USB 2.0 ports, a Firewire, an eSATA, two gigabit ethernet ports, as well as 7.1 audio, and thank you for checking out my unboxing of the P7P55DE Deluxe.